Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nick Drinks. This is our final Game of Thrones episode. We made it through all nine. Thank you everyone who helped with this. Thank you to Diageo for providing some products. This has been great, this has been a ton of fun. And now, another episode of Game of Drinks. The finale. Brought to you by Diageo. I need you two to guard the wall. Aye, sir. Aye, Aye sir. sir. No one goes in or out. Ah, so you're saying you want us to whore door? You know, whore door. Like, hold the door, you know? Too soon. Wow. <sighs> that joke landed like King Toman. What's wrong with you? I, I, <laughs> Nick Snow, I expected better from you. This truly has been an eye-opening experience. That's what, uh, that's what Oberyn said. Just guard the wall. All right, let's go. Well, here we are, just a couple of Night's Watchmen guarding the door to the Army of the Dead. I mean, this is as pointless as a dessert table at the Red Wedding. Have you no shame? We should drink. I've got a flask around here somewhere. Ah. Rawr. A delivery, you say? Yeah, I can sign for this. Oh, oh, okay. Great. Ah. Ah, a flask. Ah. Oh, that's great. That went down easier than High Sparrow's Cathedral. You're a terrible person. It's true. Yeah, this is going to be a long, boring night. <sighs> Agreed. We are joined by Yanni Fry, who is the bartender over at Bad Luck Bar in Detroit. Hello. Hi. Thank you for your work of the many characters on uh, the My episode. My absolute pleasure. <laughs> so um, we are talking Oban today, which is the Night's Watch. This was, in theory, the hardest one to get. But for the most part, if a store had the full line, they probably had uh, the Night's Watch as well. Um, these went anywhere from $35 to $60 uh, initially. Now they're going on the secondary market for hundreds. So we are very lucky to get these. Um, we did purchase these are on our own, um, but Diageo helped out with some of the others that we were going to compare and contrast to. So let's start with um, Oban. Uh, Oban's been around for a while. Uh, the 14. Tell me a little bit about it. Really standard, uh, I wouldn't say standard stuff, but uh, standard in the, in the idea of that it's, you know, it's known. It's one mm -hmm. of those kind of go-to uh, higher end Highland uh, style scotches. Okay. You know, you're going to get a little earthiness, uh, a little smokiness, but mainly just that uh, classic Highland malt uh, sweetness and softness that everyone's looking for when they're, they're drinking the Highland stuff versus the Isla stuff. And I feel when I was in college and just getting into drinking, like when you thought about like premium scotch, this tended to be what I went to. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, huge, huge in, in name, uh, for sure. Oban, that's, that's a good scotch. You know, whether you're drinking more expensive or less expensive stuff, this was definitely in your mind's perception to be uh, on the nicer end of the, cal the, the range. So we got um, 14 years old. Uh, this is, you said it is a high, West Highland. So um, what, what does a Westland Highland normally mean? Kind of a lighter? Just, uh, you know, people always talk about where scotch is made in, in, in region mm -hmm. uh, and obviously from Scotland. Uh, scotch is coming from Scotland. Um, but there is no actual laws mm -hmm. or rules. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of really up in the air. Scotch companies will tell you this first over bartenders. It's all about kind of the brand okay. and what their um, their goal is uh, at the end of the day of what kind of whiskey they're making um, versus we're in Highland, we're going to make this okay. kind of style or we're... I will say that Isla Scotch is for sure 
uh, you know, known Minerally, for their smokiness yeah, yeah. and their saltiness because they are on the island, and that's just kind of how they do it. But for everywhere else, you can absolutely have a really peaty scotch in Highland, and you can have a really mm. sweet, not peaty scotch in, in Isla, too. So okay. it's just brands with the flow. Yeah. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Um, I get a ton of kind of floral. I get a lot of that honey, uh, that mm -hmm. grain, that really nice round barley, uh, oh, yeah. uh, honey notes on the front, that like sweetness. They're really doing a great job on coaxing that sweetness out of that, uh, oh. out of that grain. Yeah, you're totally right. Of, of, of all of the base ones, this definitely has some really great, great sweet flavors. Um, not in a liqueur standpoint, but just complimenting and um, very pleasant. A little spice, a little bit of earthiness, a little smoke, but you're still kind of, the, the main name of the flavor is that round, mm -hmm. kind of warm, uh, uh, subtle baking spice, but like that honey, yeah. I get a lot of honey off of that too. Absolutely. Now, uh, this at a price point wise is probably 50s? Uh, a little bit more than that, I okay. think. Would you, and I know your bar is a little more unique, would you end up mixing this or would you do something straight or? Uh, we have this, we have Oban. Um, it's, it's, it's a great seller. Um, and we, I would say typically it's, it's a neat pour okay. um, or a very straightforward classic cocktail. Okay. Uh, makes a great Sazerac. Oh, oh, that's something I haven't heard before. I dig that, all right. So now we're moving on to Little Bay, which I have no experience in. I've never even heard yeah. of it. So this basically says, this is small cask, um, distilled in small batches and slowly, slowly married with our smallest casks for distinct, deep smoothness and fruity characters. Boy, that gold is absolutely impossible to read. Mm. Um, I, do we get many of the Oban varieties in Michigan? No. Um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I'll, I'll say that when it comes to scotches and all these delightful variations of what kind of this f uh, flagship of the Oban 14 is, um, and the flagship of, you know, Dalwini and Singleton and all the other different versions. It, it's kind of, that's what is known in Michigan in the state, and then everything else is like, I, I don't hear about it until it's already sold off. Like, oh, did you get this bottle kind of a thing? Like, I had no idea that that was a thing, because it just kind of goes, mm -hmm. it hits the stores, they do some small promotions or whatever, and then it's gone, and then bartenders and bar owners are left to kind of scrounge for whatever's left uh, if they hear of it. So, now you've been doing bartending now for 10 years? 10 years. Okay. Uh, have you noticed uh, kind of more unique stuff like this being easier to get or same? It, uh, just available. I mean, I don't, okay. I don't think that there was, uh, 10 years ago when we were doing, uh, when I was doing bartending, especially with the Scotch world, there was different kind of expressions mm -hmm. of the same things. So like this is a little bit older, same juice. This is the same juice, not as old, but finished in a different wood or barrel. Now we're really getting more creativity. Yeah. So I just think that there's more options. Uh, I think the quantity is still low, so that hasn't really changed, like it's more available. But I think that having more options, more variety of different unique kind of one-off things is really fun and uh, a cool thing to uh, be able to experience. Just kind of like tie in your favorite TV show yeah. with the theme and the art with whatever you're drinking and it kind of goes all in hand, you know, you get in a full circle of all they need to do is come out with some like snacks, you know, like some Game of Thrones flavored popcorn or something like that, I don't know. I wonder if that, I haven't seen that. Well, well, there you go. You got it here. <laughs> oh, the floral's muted. Uh, I weirdly get less complexity. Yeah. Um, more, oh. not not in a bad way. A narrow bandwidth, maybe. Yeah. So you're just getting stronger, less flavors. Stronger, more pronounced notes of flavor. Yeah. Less kind of delicate stuff. So you're getting it's more of like a, you know. Tannins and sherries, maybe. Straightforward, I yeah. guess, is a straightforward punch. You get a little fruitiness on it, mm -hmm. uh, you get a little floralness, but definitely uh, more of that kind of like distinct mm -hmm. flavor. So a little sweetness from the sherry, and then that cuts off to a little uh, spice from the wood, yeah. which cuts off to kind of that grain uh, sweetness back into it versus a wine sweetness, which you're getting up front from mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. uh, barrel finishing. That's a lot of fun. It is, yeah. It's a lot of fun. And that just goes to show, I'm sure that these uh, juices are very similar, if not exactly the same, just from the mm. technique and science of 
different types of barrels, where they are in the warehouse, the sizes of these. So they're saying they're blending this with smaller cask. So you're getting, uh, in theory, more wood, more sugars from the wood, because uh, you're getting more contact uh, with the wood mm -hmm. with uh, less juice. So, so, so the less product, so the smaller the barrel, you're basically increasing your surface area, kind yep. of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. A couple local producers do that too, I feel like, because there's a cost savings too, because you're sure. spending less on barrels. I think a lot of, uh, because we're so new in the craft distilling game in Michigan as well, that you're buying juice from big factories and you want to have a little signature on there. Mm -hmm. So to kind of finish it mm -hmm. in your own unique barrel or whatever's kind of uh, close to your heart in, in Michigan or whatever you have going on as a, as a distillery or a liquor distributor owner, liquor company owner. Uh, I think that's a, a big thing in, uh, yeah. in Michigan for the spirits. What is the weirdest barrel you've seen? Oh, not, not so like a, maybe like either a wine or a wood or something yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, but it's, it's the new, well, the new Bob Dylan Heaven's Door whiskey. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their rye, so they're doing three different ones. The rye is finished, or I should say aged in used cigar barrels. So they're taking what? used bourbon barrels, because you can only use those once, aging cigars in those. They're not obviously doing it. It's a company, affiliate company, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then a third use is putting their rye in it. So it is a Tennessee rye, so they can get around the, the one use bourbon mm -hmm. law because they're making a yep. Tennessee rye. And uh, it gives it this really fun added flavor that you don't get on anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's almost like you licked a cigar that's not lit and then you had a, a sip of whiskey. That is the sensation. So I would say that's kind of the weirdest one because I've never, mm -hmm. I've you know heard of all the different million different wines, mm -hmm. Chardonnay, even the wines I would have never thought of to have uh, whiskey or, or spirits aged in. But I would say that was, and it, it makes sense. But out of all the things, you mm -hmm. know, wine makes more sense to me than you know an old yeah. cigar tobacco barrel. But it really gives a lot of really uh, wonderful flavors to it. I like well, it a lot. And if you think about, uh, there was a, a big push for tobacco bitters for a while, mm -hmm. and then as people kind of discovered, oh, that's maybe not so good. Sure, all the nicotine, all the chemicals yeah. added. They still want that kind of. It's always this fake smoking kind of idea, which I always uh, fall in love with because. To be able to smoke without smoking mm -hmm. is, is a fantastic thing. Right. <laughs> uh, and then on kind of the other side, uh, there are a lot of cigars that are uh, dipped or aged yep. with bourbon. 100%. So I get that It connection. makes sense. Yeah. I just, I, first time I actually saw a product in front of me, like it's not finished. It is aged five or six or seven years in this weird cigar barrel. Fascinating. Love it. Next one. All right, last one. So this is the Oban Bay Reserve. This is what everyone was clamoring for. So this is the one that's hard to get on the aftermarket. Yeah, they're all kind of equally hard, I feel like now. Um, How much would you say is because it has Game of Thrones on it? Because I, rem I remember that the wines that came out, it had Game of Thrones on it, and some people were drinking them and were like, this is... Ta well, the, table red with an extra, you know, couple bucks added onto it because it's in a cool for marketing package, and I love it. I think it's great. I, I wish companies did more with like things and, and themes. I, I find weirdly, out of all the companies, vodka have been doing it for this whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolute does special edition bottles. Yep. They're the same vodka. Sometimes they'll do a flavor, but um, different bottle, different themes, and only now has. Scotch and other companies uh, picked up on that kind of idea of let's we can do something cool too and and make it a little bit more right you know not as watered down I guess or cheesy like oh it's party edition uh, no this is Game of Thrones edition and I, I wonder if part of it is like the label is kind of the challenge sure so maybe by having to do this Game of Thrones you know to do these nine special labels was a, a feat yeah I I agree. It's always hard to Ooh. have a product and then pair, like, how, did they have know? this yeah. logo of, of House Tyrell and then blend the scotch to Im imagery of what they came up with, or... They're light. So, like... Vice versa? When you look at some of these, so, um... The this one, is for sure a House Stark, you know, like... Yeah, right? How do you know? Tully, so when we looked at Singleton, this was, um... They actually had a, a river uh, water wheel. Okay. And so did Tully. They were kind of on the, the river, too. Sure. So that so was there's kind of the, there's a tie light connection. Ends. Okay. Um, and, you know, we could probably even look at this. So we're doing Oban Bay Reserve now. 
Um, Oban sits beneath the steep, steep cliff that overlooks the bay in its frontier between the West Highlands and the islands, separating the land and sea, just as Castle Black sits between Restoros and what's beyond the wall. The liquid's richness is balanced by its wood spicy dryness that could undoubtedly keep, keep the night's watch warm on even the coldest nights. I, uh, I definitely get a lot of baking spice, more so than any of the other two that we had. Uh, it's definitely a more richer, meatier, mm -hmm. chewy scotch. This is, I'm, I love Oban and stuff, it's great but I'm more of a really peaty, smoky, I wanna like savor. I'm drinking scotch neat typically, so I want it to be a little bit more of a challenge. Oh my gosh, that's that's got my name all over yep. that. Um, so this one I feel is more of what I would go to, which is crazy because it's still Oban, but they're doing a little bit more to it to make it so much more rich, I think, and more chewy and like, I know I keep saying that word, but yeah. like when you when you get some, like that's that's definitely what I'm getting. Oh yeah. This stuff's great. Wow. Okay. Different. different. Totally different. Yeah. Um, do you think that's all aging or do you think that's more? Because it's like, like I think ash the, and fire and smoke. I think smoke. that the grain, like the mash bill is the same across the board because you're still getting the same kind of yeast, barley, mm -hmm. alcohol, scotch flavor, like the core, the essence of it, the yeah. soul of what... Oban is is there, but there's definitely like more nuance on top of it. Oh, yeah. Zero floral on it. Yeah. Uh, really, really heavy baking spice. Uh, really, just more of a, a higher salinity. I would find yep. uh, you know a little bit more savory, uh, a little bit more earthy than any of the other two <laughs> for <laughs> sure. Or mm -hmm. or Highlands. I mean, this is definitely like the contradiction of what Highland could yeah. be. Is is this guy right here? Absolutely. So now that we've gone through all nine of them, one of the things we wanted to taste is are these just repackaged bottles that are already on the shelf? And now that we've done all nine, no. Every single one has been different. There have been some close, but um, especially ones like this are just totally different. I like it a lot. So I, I applaud Diageo for doing that, for not just repackaging something. That, that they did put some time and effort into us. So. Great job. Yeah. I'll drink this one. They should... They should make it. They should make more. Yeah, maybe just some weird barrel they found in a corner somewhere. <laughs> well, yeah, Annie, thank you so much. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about Bad Luck? If people Bad Luck more. is a great little cocktail bar. Uh, we hold uh, thirty-two guests, and that is it. So we're real intimate. Open six days a week, Monday through Saturday, five to two a.m. And besides kind of having some unique takes on very creative cocktails, you also get some really rare and peculiar spirits. We. Yes, uh, yes, this is the short answer. Uh, people contact us and they're like, hey, you want some crazy stuff? And it's not How do you more, say no to that? Right, it, it's hard, you know. The, these are all available in Michigan or have been mm -hmm. for a select time and a lot of bars don't carry them, not because they couldn't get them. They don't know how to sell them or what they're about. Mm -hmm. And we employ some of the best bartenders, in my opinion, in the state or in the area. And uh, to be able to have educated, well-knowledgeable bartenders that are working together mm -hmm. is, is the secret, I yeah. think, to be able to sell anything or, or talk about anything or showcase anything is just having that little bit of uh, extra knowledge. That's been great. And that's what we got. So if you want a 30 ingredient cocktail or a two ingredient cocktail, mm -hmm. we will make it as best as we can for you. And I always appreciate that you guys really strive to have some great hospitality. Thank you. Um, it's some of the, the, the growth I've seen in Detroit um, is there are a number of places that are really trying to up that game and you know, really treating that customer as a guest, um, you know, giving them a warm cocktail on an evening or a little welcome thing. Or I, I think that really shows um, kind of that next level where Michigan can go. Thank you. We, yeah. You can always make a pretty space. Yep. You can always hire pretty bartenders. If no one's nice to you when they come in, what's the point of, of going back? I like that. Well, I'll cheers to that. And uh, if you want to learn more about Nick Drinks, you can definitely watch us on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Nick Drinks. You can find our website, nickdrinks.com, and of course, our Instagram and Facebook at nickdrinks.com, all spelled out. This is it. We finished nine episodes. We're super excited about this. Uh, if What do we do next? Leave some comments below, and uh, we'll tackle the next challenge. Until next time, everyone. Cheers. No one goes in or out. Ah, so you're saying you want us to whore door? Whore door. You know, hold the door? Too soon. Wow.
Well, that joke landed like King Tommen. What's wrong with you? Nick Snow, I expected better 